up next is ionic radius. So there's a couple ways that we can approach radius of ions problems. <coughs> we can compare an atom to its ion. And we can look both at positive ions. Um, remember, positive ions are also called cations. And we can compare it to negative ions, which are also called anions. We can also compare ions to each other. Um, and typically, this is done through um, something that's called isoelectronic species, which I'll get back to in a minute. So if I'm comparing an atom to its ion, let's look at our um, first example. Let me clear that up. So our first example that we're going to look at is, let's consider, for example, F versus F minus 1. Fluorine has nine protons in the nucleus. The first shell has two electrons, and the second shell has seven electrons. I'm going to draw the electrons sort of differently than I normally do. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How is this going to change when I change to Fe minus 1? With Fe minus 1, we're going to have to add an electron. Where am I going to add that electron? I'm going to add that electron to this outer shell. So electrons repel one another, which means if I want to jam another electron into there, it's going to push all of them out a little bit more, making that shell just a little bit bigger. So when we add an electron, it's going to make the shell just a little bit bigger because it needs to accommodate more electrons. And that's because the electrons repel one another. You can think of it, and an analogy I use sometimes is like if you have a circle of friends and another friend comes up and wants to join the circle, you need to make that circle just a little bit bigger in order to accommodate them. Same idea, except when electrons aren't friends holding hands, but they push each other out a little bit because they repel one another. So if I'm comparing an atom to its ion and I add an electron, I'm going to make it bigger. Another thing, way, another example I can look at is we could compare something like Li to Li plus one. Both have three protons, like all lithiums do. Lithium, when it's not an ion, has two electrons in the first shell and one electron in the second shell. Lithium plus one has lost an electron. Which electron does it lose? This guy. So now rather than having two shells of electrons, it only has one shell of electrons. So clearly, this one's going to be bigger. because it has two occupied shells of electrons versus one occupied shell of electrons. The last way that we sometimes ask you to compare things is we ask you to compare what are known as isoelectronic species. Isoelectronic, the prefix iso means same. So these are things with the same number of electrons. So for example, O minus two in Na plus one. Oxygen minus two has eight protons and 10 electrons. Sodium plus one has 11 protons and 10 electrons. So if I made these little sketches again, eight protons, two electrons, and then eight electrons in the second shell, whereas lithium has 11 protons, two electrons, eight electrons. So the electrons are the same, thus the isoelectronic term. What's different between these is how the protons are pulling on those electrons. This atom has 11 protons pulling on its electrons, so it's able to pull harder, making it smaller. So when we have isoelectronic species,
the one with more protons pulls harder on electrons, making it smaller. Okay, so when I am comparing the same element but different charges, the one with more electrons is bigger. Whether it's a positive ion or a negative ion, when I'm comparing an atom to its ion, the one with more electrons is bigger. When I'm comparing ions that are isoelectronic, the one with more protons is smaller, so the one with fewer protons is bigger.